Uh, so in terms of the value of online education, uh, yeah, there was a learning curve to learn the new platform and how to replicate the same uh, training from the offline model to the online. And those students were enthusiastic. A lot of the teachers agreed that the students got lazy after some time and it, uh, they started to turn off their camera and not respond when called upon in class and the motivation levels were dropping a lot. Uh, it was also difficult to hold assessments online because there was a, a definitely a risk of copying and it was uh, not as easy to replicate online. Uh, then, um, but uh, there was definitely an op option for extra interest modules being conducted, which definitely would not have happened had it not been for the online uh, system. Uh, then coming to the opportunities and challenges for UG, um, definitely one of the challenges that came out was that there was, as it is, a, a, a dearth of faculty because of the COVID duties and the COVID pandemic itself, which itself posed a, a problem. And then the online uh, platform itself was a secondary problem. Um, uh, Dr. Raman said that uh, in their college, they had the entire batch attending the, uh, a single clinical posting where they used uh, the, um, the PGs to uh, perform role plays. Uh, and so that's how they completed their psychiatry posting in just four days. Um, but uh, the theory classes remained a boring exercise for both faculty and students, and therefore there was a lot of push to try different innovative methods like uh, posting of videos between theory classes and uh, etc. Um, then, uh, yeah, there was a reiteration that there was, uh, you know, no uh, clear etiquette of like, you know, what, how should a student behave in the online uh, platform. Uh, so, uh, what was attempted by Dr. Kathleen uh, was she would break the topic into chunks and take feedback between the chunks uh, and conduct pre-test and post-test between the, uh, for each lecture and each topic. Um, there was an, uh, 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 an opportunity that was presented was the fact that pre-recorded video lectures were a possibility that could be recorded at the convenience of the faculty and watched by students later on. But uh, a, a fundamental challenge that was again brought up was the fact that the human touch was definitely missing. Um, um, Smita ma'am uh, again pointed out that if, if the students were committed, it was definitely a boon because they said that it saved them time and uh, the, the, the asynchronous uh, mode definitely was beneficial for them. But uh, for uh, uh, students from a rural area, there was net, connect, net, net connectivity and financial issues in terms of using uh, a device 24-7 uh, for their online classes. Uh, definitely, she said that attitudes and etiquettes, the hidden curriculum and clinical skills were three domains in which uh, students definitely were lacking. Um, um, if you could and, wrap up quickly. Yeah, I'll wrap up quickly. Okay, so uh, for PGs, um, uh, Dr. Mano Rakesh, a PG uh, student, said that uh, one of the benefits was that during their peripheral posting and during their leave, etc., they were able to still attend the seminars, which would have happened offline otherwise. But um, there was no scrutiny of attendance, and uh, they ended up again lacking the skin, uh, skills from the hidden curriculum. Uh, it was, uh, and again, uh, they lost a lot of the clinical experience because of themselves doing COVID duties. And uh, uh, unfortunately, a lot of faculty have to give uh, a lot of leeway uh, for PGs uh, because they don't have the clinical skills. Uh, in terms of innovation, some of the innovations that came up were uh, some uh, people uh, preferred the flipped classroom modality where uh, students would be assigned pre-reading before the class. Then uh, Google form quizzes, a pre-test and post-test model uh, using case studies for, quiz uh, for classes, using Kahoot quizzes and um, uploading videos on YouTube for uh, education. Um, online uh, seminars and then dr smita from uh, ks headday college also mentioned a paid uh, website called nu e learn uh, which was customized and used for their mbbs training uh, and uh, in that the unique point was that uh, it has discussion boards which allow for asynchronous learning where uh, the teacher can respond at their convenience uh, then we concluded with a discussion on student wellness and so uh, how that was also an integral part of online teaching during the pandemic. And so uh, under that, some wellness sessions, WhatsApp groups that were uh, dedicated towards wellness were uh, brought up. So I request everyone to make their opinion, comments, any points to add for the 
things they have raised sir if i may uh, add a point this is to joy yeah. here hi yeah yeah um, uh, this is just uh, drawing on the point which uh, dwani mentioned about ethics in the uh, you know online class we do have these incidents i mean i mean it's it's a very bad thing to say but we sometimes have these incidences where we don't know how but whether these things are hacked or what and we see some really abusive comments in chat boxes and things like that uh, it's not really in our realm it's a cyber security thing but do we know how to address that challenge because in uh, physical classes people will not uh, you know make abusive comments and all that but online it happens yeah i mean i i just want to make a quick comment there some of the universities have hired uh, it professionals yeah. and uh, they keep a track record of all the events so in a, in in our university there is a person who is always sitting once you notify what number and how this connection happened they go back usually for each class there is a representative and they find out who logged in how did they log in and uh, uh, it starts from uh, first standard and it goes on to uh, phd viva sessions how people have misused or overused or abused these things and obviously uh, now uh, at some university one of the faculty is also given the in charge of cyber uh, monitoring cell so i know a person from community medicine who has been given in charge and his responsibility is to uh, keep track of such kind of things uh, and monitor it so i think it's a welcome step uh, if there are some checks and bounces uh, balances somewhere uh, in the place but i want everybody's opinion on other things uh, dwani spoke about apart from what sujay rai said so can you stick to the uh, discussion to 2 minutes if possible yeah so i will quickly ask uh, the uh, vikas menon you want you want to add more on this uh, no see uh, question the... vikas i would really like to congratulate because they talked about wellness i think very often we forget about the wellness part and i congratulate them for highlighting the concept of wellness and attending it online so congratulations to the team for that uh dwani is also the quarter of the wellness to breathe the uh, wellness book yes, that sir. got released today ma'am yeah. yeah congratulations voice for wellness first of all i want to thank uh, everyone in my team and uh, dwani for beautifully summarizing the point i think the major two or three themes that came up during our discussion was that everybody was in uh, agreement about that online teaching is here to stay during the pandemic and beyond the pandemic also whenever uh, that beyond comes but the major concern that is that is expressed was for the knowledge part it is fine but for the at skills and attitude part you know we need there are challenges we continue to we have still not found the right surrogates for clinical contact that is the major theme that came up because for loss of clinical time what are the surrogates that can be so various things like simulation some of the, pe the people talked about role play using post graduates but the general consensus was that it's it uh, you know it still remains to be determined how that will compare with face to face teaching particularly in specialties such as psychiatry where there's a lot of uh, direct interviewing contact with the patient and those kind of things the other thing that was the theme that majorly came up was about the uh, the attitudes the what we call the hidden curriculum you know we observe a lot from our teachers the way they present themselves the way they uh, punctuality honesty integrity all those things so those kind of things are not uh, i mean are not so robustly transferred in an online teaching learning platform compared to face to face teaching so these are two areas where our team felt that still a lot of work needs to be done but we need to explore probably you know what the, the power of alternate methods like social media and other things in compensating for this uh, clinical time and a uh, lot of innovative methods one of the participants i thought particularly presented a very important uh, very interesting thing on how uh, the lectures were broken up into small small capsules rather than delivering one big lecture on the go you know where people are where students feel disengaged because student disengagement is another big challenge so breaking up lectures into small small capsules and taking feedback after every 15 or 20 minutes was one way how uh, effectiveness of an online lecture can be improved and of course the last point i want to bring is that uh, we i i only just put it as a small thing but many i found that many of the institutions are already working on the student wellness because if you want students to learn better they have to be physically and mentally healthy and one of the uh, participants talked about how a whatsapp group was formed where 
not only learning materials were discussed but also you know uh, people could share their issues privately or uh, in the forum so that they can take input from each other so i i we actually couldn't get time to discuss more on that so we just didn't know how 40 minutes went so that was uh, student wellness was also part of the discussion that's all from my side kishu Sure, if I can just add one minute, just one last one is that you know, we I think also have to look at immersive technology in the future and whether that in any way will help us for skill building. I don't know, these are avenues which are open and we in the future may well, they may not be the as good as face to face, but maybe some of that will come up in the future. Thank you, Sri Lakshmi, ma'am. Naresh, do you have anything to say? On this? Again, these immersive techniques or various multimedia techniques may remind us of our games. So when mm -hmm. we are teaching, we'll go to our game game tablets. So no, it's nice, ma'am. Thank you. May I add one point, yeah. please? Yeah, please. Yeah, one of the things which I have to share is the ethical dilemmas that I as a teacher had to face, like exposing the students to infection when they had to take long histories uh, with, with learning the subject. So uh, it, it was difficult on that aspect. True. Yeah, that was uh, another interesting thing that was discussed. Thank you, Bharat. Anybody else? Or we'll be moved to the next. Thank you. Thank you. Inal ma'am, will you take yes. the next team? Yes. Thank you. So go to group C and I'm just trying to pull out and see. Yeah, that is issues and implementation of CBME. And that was moderated by Dr. Arun and Dr. Uh, George. So may I ask them moderators yes. to nominate whoever is a presenter to come forward and present oh hey, Vinay, is that you yes. Super. Yes, Vinay, yes. Please go ahead and uh, i thought uh, let us be honest uh, in uh, uh, mentioning the summary so it's it starts with a disclaimer that uh, the 45 minutes given to us for the discussion was not enough to talk, do justice for it and three minutes is still not enough to say the whole summary of it so it was actually the organizing team uh, st john's who through the scheduled zoom meeting who concluded the session that rather than the moderators <laughs> so uh, i mean uh, moderators decided that for the sake of convenience they thought the five subtopics uh, they identified why is it relevant uh, what are the issues uh, in specific methods used in implementation of cbme then issues with assessment and then perspectives and challenges from the students and also perspectives and challenges from the faculty so uh, the group had uh, aptly uh, all the cadres of faculty, professor, associate, assistant, recently passed out postgraduate, and then a few of undergraduate students as well. So all agreed that it is relevant and it's a, it's a this kind of platform which will provide a, a way to discuss some of the issues. Coming to the issue specific uh, to the methods, teaching learning methods used in, so uh, uh, the group felt that uh, uh, since uh, already uh, uh, two years are over of uh, implementation of CBME and uh, clinical postings is the one uh, teaching learning method they've used already. They feel that the continuity in postings is uh, they communicated their apprehension regarding that because one in uh, second year and then one in third year, whether two weeks period of exposure and then again two weeks will do justice and uh, whether there will be continuity maintained. And of course, currently, whatever already the discussion has happened in terms of online. So it's quite challenging. Uh, in terms of uh, teaching learning methods and also assessment. So many of them felt that whatever current online uh, teaching learning uh, methods that we have adopted, it's for only for the knowledge domain and the skills. Uh, it may not do justice to it. And uh, undergraduate students, they felt that, uh, yeah, with regard to the classes that, that are taken, it would be better that if they can uh, state the objectives and also relevance of each of the, this knowledge domain in particular, so that they feel uh, it is relevant. I mean, going further, how do they uh, uh, involve this aspect? And uh, moderators felt that the faculty training of this kind so will help us in this regard. With regard to issues with assessment, so uh, right now, uh, since there are specific competencies to be addressed, uh, uh, though earlier it was opportunistic learning in bedside clinics, cl clinical teaching, now they've adopted simulated teaching and even appropriate assessment methods. So they are going ahead with that. And formative assessment is a newer thing that they have tried to implement. So for both this aspect, they feel that the resource constraints are there in most of the colleges. Uh, and in terms of perspectives and challenges from the students, the group had undergraduates in uh, Ananya Varshne and uh, Surabhi Shastri. So they said that uh, now that the recent early clinical exposure is there, 
so now they are feeling that the concepts which are uh, taught to them theoretically so they are uh, relevant actually and uh, they are feeling passionate about it unless they feel uh, interested relevant and passionate so it becomes difficult for them to learn so this is one opportunity and they are also getting specific feedbacks for their learning so that way they are uh, uh, improvising upon uh, their own uh, teaching learning uh, and uh, in, in terms of perspectives and challenges from the faculty so uh, many of them felt that there are a lot of issues that needs clarity and also uniformity across the institutions so we were about to discuss some of the things i mean uh, i thought personally that uh, the implementation issues could be discussed under the headings of foundation course clinical postings lecture classes tutorials and small group teaching integration integrated teaching sessions at com module electives and finally assessment but by then the discussion got closed uh, so but whatever it is so there are few things that a few of them have shared what they're doing so this kind of a platform will definitely help in actually sharing the experiences and also uh, trying to disseminate the information and to bring about uniformity so it kind of a concluded with a thing that it's a kind of a symbolic way of uh, handling things so it to kitab trailer tha puri film abhi baki hai and cbm is not a one day thing so it in not even a one year so it takes few years so looking ahead uh, for uh, input from other as they say you know change is nice when it's done to others and it's difficult when done to us and so we are all trying in the throes of change and trying to grapple with cbme um, so i leave it open for the others for their comments and uh, ideas that they have so till somebody comes up i think one thing that i would really like is if people could put in and even even mail later what aspects of cpa cbme should ips try and organize faculty development or discussions on because it's too huge we will not be able to do everything but if there are some things that we all need to get together and talk about some things or learn some things or get somebody to teach us some things if we can identify those areas because now we have been trying for one year not all of us have been able to try because all postings have gone hey wire but if there are some things like that we can kind of have a group and somebody working on it and you know helping us to move it along so i leave that open for the thought but others who would like to comment um, because this is something that affects each and every one of us all the problems that people are sharing with cbme or want to talk about ma'am yes please yeah ma'am ma one advantage I, that i see with ug cbme curriculum is uh, now third year has two two weeks of clinical postings in psychiatry and they also have pushed the final year theory to third year so there is some integration with like i think clinical and theory posting otherwise they would finish clinical posting at two years yeah. second year and theory will come very later so which is at a disadvantage for the students some integration was i think i think seeing it as an advantage of the cbme curriculum as far as the pg cbme curriculum we were having difficulty in implementing the peripheral posting man because most of the government hospitals were not allowing uh, for the peripheral postings like Uh, for foreign sake or like child psychiatry so we started resorting to choosing private child psychiatrists who have a dm or the done pdf in child psychiatry and then uh, they have tie up with ot occupational therapy who, uh, centers so where the students will be going there for ot or speech and other things and the actual theory part and the clinical part will be done by the private child psychiatrists this is one thing that we have done for the pgs oh innovative i mean you'll found a way to get over that also wonderful Uh, any other thoughts anybody else who has to talk about how they're struggling or how they've achieved some of the things in cbme so i would just also like to add that ips and the same group has come up with a cbme uh, booklet which i don't think has been yet officially released by ips but uh, is it possible for us to at least share it informally in the groups so people can use it and uh, work on it kishore dr vinay is that possible yes. to do that because you know really that work has some amount of help in it and get some uniformity so is that possible to do that i was just wondering I think Vinay has it, and yeah. uh, they have. So while we have sent it to the IPS map uh, for uh, kind of a vetting, so still, I mean, those who are interested, uh, it, it has been posted in the EAPS. An informal share. Yes, sure, ma'am. Uh, 
Kishore. Vinay, what we can do is that we can ask uh, Suhas to give all the email IDs of the people who have registered and we can send it uh, whether it is undergraduates or postgraduates or psychiatric faculty and request for opinion, comments, suggestions and other yeah. things. Uh, that would be a nice way. I think Suhas has taken note of that and uh, Vinay, you can think of uh, Priya is there. Priya can also yeah. um, do that. Yes, yeah, sir. That's a good idea. So, here yeah, I'll make sure that it's sent to all of the registered participants. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And there are on the on the on the on the chat there are some questions. Uh, they have said IPS FTTF uh, faculty training can consider providing basic curriculum and logbook drafts. Perfect. That's exactly what we are talking about. And we have made a model. We are going to send it out, and you all can comment on it, and then we can work on it together. Second thing Kiran has written is electives in psychiatry will be good to build interest, perfect. And uh, this is something we should really capitalize on because many students are interested in, um, you know, interesting electives and we should work on that. Um, Dr. Kishore has given some resources in the chat on uh, psychiatry uh, for psychiatry teachers. Dr. Dr. Vasant Meghna has said creating psychiatry education units to train us at zonal levels. So whether IPS at the zonal level can have uh, units to help in training. And um, if that is going to happen, I again look forward to the same group to be the faculty there to help at the zonal level because we need people who are interested and motivated and have the competency to train. But that is an idea we can take back for IPS to discuss. Thank you for those ideas. Any other questions about CBME? So if I can ask uh, the moderators to have the last word before we hand it over. Yeah, Karen, yeah. yeah, it was actually a quite participatory discussion. And as mentioned, the CBME gives us a lot of opportunities. At the same time, we should also foresee some challenges. But how can we convert those challenges into opportunities is what we actually came across in our discussion. Something also which need to be looked into is the heterogeneity in the system that we are following. So, um, for example, the, the one of the presentations on uh, research, uh, the presenter was actually mentioning like how uh, diverse our country is and so research in one state need not be the same in another state. Same way, uh, when we are looking at a uniformity of CBME curriculum, but within which there should be scope for uh, diversity as well. So that is something which I think we should look forward to. And ultimately it's a process. So we cannot have the CBME implemented on one single day, okay. but we should see it as a process. So, and we are definitely in the right direction. Um, by listening to Dr. Ananya, she was saying how in, uh, interesting it was like. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you had a co-moderator with you, right? Yes, Johnny. Yeah, please, Johnny, please. Yes, ma'am. So uh, thank you, Vinay. That was very, very comprehensively summarized, you know, all that we discussed. And um, yes, I, I just like to leave with uh, what uh, I think one of the students in our group said, you know, she said, uh, this whole thing gives them a chance to feel actually inspired by the subject. And I think that's, that's something really, really good. So yeah, thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. Thank you. And I think this is really the crux for this coming years or couple of years as we grapple and understand CBME. And I'm sure NMC will also modify it along the way as they also come up with better ideas and we give them feedback. So wonderful. Thank you, group. Thank you, moderators, participants, and Vinay for beautifully summarizing. Uh, three cheers for you all. And I give it back to Kishore for the next group. The next group is led by Sri Lakshmi, ma'am. You want to call upon no? group four. The next group is led by Naresh. Yeah. yeah. Naresh, who is your, the person going to talk from your group? Dr. Jina will be talking from our group. She has volunteered. She's <laughs> from St. John's. Dr. Jina. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, we have so home support, the... Jina. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, the group D discussion was on teaching students how to teach, and our moderator was Dr. Naresh Nebhinani. Uh, the questions accordingly. Uh, the first was uh, the relevance of these uh, topic. So uh, the, the points that come, came up were mutual learning, where one can learn from each other along the way. 
there was a point on the enriching our knowledge and experiences uh, along the, the teaching and uh, also points of residents are being empowered in the process as they have more contact with the patient as compared to the consultants. Uh, also another point of standalone uh, practitioner who would want to come back uh, to be a part of an acad uh, academy or part of a teaching hospital. But then again, uh, teaching itself is a difficult task. So in that case, this topic is relevant. Uh, the next question was on the method of implementation. Um, a formal and informal teaching methods came up, on, uh, came up. The formal teaching would be in the form of the residency program. Um, informal teaching would be that of the group discussion, uh, observing when a consultant is uh, uh, seeing a patient. Uh, so we take every opportunity to teach. Um, uh, point on role play, uh, where uh, uh, a scenario is being put forward and uh, the residents and uh, postgraduate are taught accordingly. Um, and another point on uh, inviting faculty from uh, other institute uh, to take lectures. This again give the resident as well as the postgraduate um, uh, it gives them less inhibition in expressing their views and uh, in asking questions which they might find it difficult to ask their own faculty. Uh, bedside teaching was also another point that came up. And uh, another point that also came, was, uh, came up was uh, to take classes for PhD doctors and to have school education for teachers as they would be the one more in contact with uh, parents and uh, students. And, uh, uh, the third question was on the assessment method used. Uh, St. John's have a questionnaire at the end of every posting where uh, postgraduate are assessed in all aspects. That would include their discipline, their behavior, uh, their, their way of handling a situation, uh, basically in all forms. And uh, uh, Ma'am also mentioned of micro teaching where a small topic is given to a resident to read up and uh, a class being taken on the part of a resident uh, for the particular topic. Um, uh, another, the, the, the fourth and the fifth question, uh, sorry, the fourth question was the student perspective on the, uh, the topic was, uh, it encourages them to speak in the vernacular that they are comfortable with. And another is the uh, PGs are given chance to teach patients, like we've said in the first point, because they are the one having more in contact with the patient. So they are given a chance to explain to the patient certain misconceptions that they might have. And the, the last two questions, the challenges faced by teachers and challenges faced by students in the above. So time constraint was one of the main thing. Uh, another thing is, uh, making uh, teaching more interesting. Um, faculty are not well versed with that, with a teaching. And again, the interest on the part of students uh, in giving a priority to teaching. Thanks for a nice summary. It's, uh, I want everybody's opinion, comments. Anybody would like to comment, add on? Postgraduates, if there are postgraduates from other institutions who want to uh, say a few things. Madam, you want to talk? Yes, yes. Yeah, just for just one few words. I think uh, the best method to teach is a being a good teacher yourself. So they learn by observation is what I felt was um, this big because when I look back into my own psychiatry career, I've always uh, modeled myself on my teachers who the way they used to teach. So the best method is to model being a good teacher. Thank you. Madam, who was your teacher? We just want to listen. <laughs> and so many, sir. But in psychiatry specifically, <laughs> Dr. Jiloha was uh, my HOD and Dr. Reshma, she had done uh, DNB in psychiatry, then moved out to psychiatry. But... Uh, any of my talks, I, I uh, model on her. She was an excellent teacher. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody else? So good evening, sir. Yeah, please. I was yeah, expecting. <laughs> so uh, there is something called a subjective structured teaching evaluation. So maybe that can be used as an assessment, like how we use for OSCE and OSCE. 
and if we have a pedagogy uh, uh, like as part of the exam exit exam then we can use that so what we have been using in our institution is uh, when interns are posted because we have continuous interns so in psychiatric posting so they will be having short talks actually so that short talks are like some semi small seminar topics are provided to them which will be actually there will be a faculty as well as one postgraduate resident and uh, the postgraduate resident uh, like will be actually supervised by the faculty on the overall uh, because the, after the presentation the discussion will be led by the resident so this is one way we just thought like we will have an opportunity to observe their actually skill. So in terms of facilitating discussion, how to bring out points or like how do they actually interpret the overall presentation and everything. So this is one thing that we just started because interns are there throughout. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. That's a nice point. Anybody else? Dr. Anil Kumar. So you want to say something? Okay, Naresh. Yeah, uh, thank you very much to organizers for giving us opportunity and the group. More interaction happened uh, and guidance through Hinal Mem, Dr. Johnson, and uh, Dr. Kiran and all the colleagues. And a special thanks to Dr. Gina for compiling. I will just start where Dr. Gina left. One. Uh, the problem is uh, one, the teachers are also not trained for these techniques. And second, the residents or students are also not given opportunities to be trained in this area. So uh, to add up uh, this session is going to be very useful. And uh, as Dr. Shri Lakshmi said the name of Dr. Jeloha, so I, it reminded Sarvas my MD examiner in 2008 and Sarvas my uh, the, the faculty in recruitment side while I appeared in this interview for Ames Jodhpur in 2013. Uh, as the Latin meaning of the term doctor is itself a teacher. And as in the previous discussions also we were discussing which the, this part we have possibly left uh, without much thinking because we need to motivate the stakeholders as well, the students. And that's why it has to be on the three innate psychological needs of uh, the students. One is competence that through this interaction they are going to be competent. So the lecture should deliver. Two, the autonomy it should balance out what do they want. And third is the relatedness that it's things are connected with connecting through public health importance of the topic or conveying some or other suffering or challenges in such scenario or conveying about uh, some or other uh, uh, suspense while we are delivering this and importantly, they are motivated through answering the question. So in between, if it is interactive, then it helps. And uh, the, again, the suggestion is made by Dr. Sri Lakshmi. So this was also made that Students should be uh, allowed to sit while the teachers are teaching. The residents are joining to the PG teachers for UG uh, lectures. So they are imbibing those uh, goods of the teacher. And yes, it is, has to be with the content is very important and along with the innovative techniques, be it think, pair, share, or jigsaw techniques. And uh, in a way, if we know that we can balance out it much well, and we can deliver much better, understanding the principles of adult learning. Thank you very much. Uh, over to Kishore. Thank you. I remember uh, Manohari Madam uh, repeatedly saying how to deliver rather than what to deliver. So I think uh, it makes a point about uh, the choices the teachers make about how the concept should be delivered, how what method should be taken up and to whom are we targeting and what is our goal in that session. These are some of the things. Thank you for the wonderful uh, compilation and the uh, expert uh, opinion. Madam, uh, over to you for the next group. Yeah. So the last group talks about systemic challenges faced in psychiatry teaching and training. And that was moderated by Dr. Sri Lakshmi. Ma'am, who would be, uh, who would be um, uh, presenting from your group? Ravi, Dr. Ravi Teja is presenting, ma'am. Yeah, please, please come ahead. And Thank you, everyone. Uh, so I would be summarizing, sort of trying to abstract uh, the discussion that was led by Dr. Sri Lakshmi on the systemic challenges faced by faculty in psychiatry. Uh, we quickly realized that when we say systemic, we are taking a top-down approach. And then we see various problems starting with stigma uh, about there is uh, the lack of uh, awareness that there is need for mental health uh, among uh, psychiatry professionals among other departments in the institute, uh, existing some ghost faculty, et cetera, et cetera. 
And then we thought if we were to look at these systems, we have to take a bottom top approach to be able to bring solutions to this. And then we thought at an individual level, people need to uh, have integrity and take responsibility, should be motivated to uh, be able to positively cope with these challenges uh, even and bring the uh, positive change. Uh, at a department level, we saw that patient numbers or lack of faculty to implement CBME uh, is an issue. Also, that at a department level, you need to have long-term faculty who are able to bridge gaps between uh, newer faculty members as well as existing departments to have cordial relations and to develop the department. At an institute level, we saw that this is way more diverse. It depends on the affiliations with the government or if the uh, institute is affiliated to a private body, if it is a faith-based religion, religious-based uh, institution, if it is, uh, uh, is working under MCI or NBE, uh, there are other uh, uh, issues like geographical region, north, south, there is a huge disparity at a societal level. Uh, at uh, interdepartment level, uh, it was understood by the group that uh, we need to take this basics of education practice and research and take a Plyson as a two-way channel. And to choose, a, to start with, we could choose a smaller department, preferably an adjacent department that you could visit every day and make friends, and then uh, develop this inter-departmental uh, uh, relationships. At an institute level, again, when uh, they see the change happening at an interdepartment level and they begin to appreciate that mental health is quintessential and it is important uh, and we need to reach out rather than wait around to be able to uh, make friends at an admin level uh, who are able to recognize our work and are able to bring out systemic changes at an institute level. Now, at a private level, uh, this can often be possible wherein you can attract all the departments for common group scenarios through case discussions, and this becomes possible. At a government level, this is way more challenging, but we are seeing very positive reforms in terms of biomedical research mandatory program, teaching learning methods mandatory program, that we are seeing that are beneficial, uh, but only if we are able to uh, apply this uh, learning at, at a, on a longer basis. Uh, at a societal level, uh, one of our members suggested that uh, we need to frame adequate uh, regulations to be able to train primary care physicians, which at the long run will make a significant impact on the society. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you for a very crisp uh, presentation, Dr. Raviteja. And uh, I leave it open for the others to comment because, you know, when we say systemic, it's the world that is open to us. And it's very easy to criticize, but I like the group that they also give suggestions how to overcome some of those challenges. So thank you for that. But others who have any ideas, because, you know, this is not always within our control, but then what is it that we can do to make it simpler for us? Any ideas, thoughts, experiences that others would like to share about systemic issues that are difficult? Um, there is Dr. Vasan Meghna who has written, for the topic of group five, another way to mitigate the systemic challenges to teaching psychiatry, the poor presence of faculty from psychiatry and administrative posts, such as dean, registrar, chancellors, and so on, needs to be improved so that psychiatrists gradually can be brought into mainstream teaching with greater acceptance and interdisciplinary cooperation. Thank you, Vasant Meghna. And I also believe, you know, that um, psychiatry is always having to challenge itself in wherever it is. So I, I really appreciate uh, training every psychiatry with leadership skills. And therefore, what Dr. Mohan Isaac and team run at uh, IP at Nimhans is a wonderful thing because um, leadership training is one is something that I think all psychiatry faculty will require because we are constantly having to prove ourselves for our existence, for the amount of time we need, or for all the things that we demand. So I feel another aspect of overcoming the systemic challenges is uh, improving our skills in in leadership, networking, administration, which is of course seconded by Vasant Meghna. Thank you. Uh, others, sir, um, Dr. Mohan Isaac, I should ask you, sir, to speak on this because you something that you've seen it across the years and seen how it works. If you would like to comment on this. 
I could only agree with you. It is absolutely important, and that is something which is not taught. We have to fight at every level. You know, in this uh, three-day program that we have been ho holding for the last several years in Bangalore and many other places, this is not just a problem here. Uh, in fact, Dr. Sartori does this every year in Germany, in Japan. Uh, uh, so psychiatry, while of course in India, the uh, place of psychiatry, uh, which has been, you know, highlighted during the whole day is at a very low level. Things are not very different in other places. It's the same all over. So the leadership uh, skills and professional skills training is very important. And uh, uh, in fact, uh, people have formed groups and they are training others, etc., etc. At every level, we have to, uh, like uh, Hina said, we have to talk to the dean, we have to talk to other colleagues, we have to convince how important it is, we have to talk to our family members, etc. And the program that we have in Bangalore is a three-day program. It's meant for 16 people. And uh, it's been widely um, attended and many people have benefited from that. So I can, uh, I would agree with you that it is important. And ideally, uh, these things should get into the regular curriculum. Uh, you know, having a program, we can only reach out to a limited number. And very often when we ask them, why did you apply? Why they say we have not learned these things. I mean, of course, we also teach them skills like how to make a presentation, how to talk to the media, how to convince an administrator, number of things, you know. Uh, we have uh, simple, simple techniques like, uh, uh, you know, the uh, elevator test where uh, you have to convince your dean because you don't get time. You ask uh, him time, he doesn't give you appointment because he doesn't think psychiatry is important. Then you manage to get into the lift with him, elevator with him. His office is on the fifth floor. You have only <laughs> maybe two minutes, depending on the efficiency of the lift, and you have to learn to convince him or send your point. So I would agree with you that these are important things and they should become part and parcel of postgraduate training so that by the time each person finishes his MD and takes charge of a department as a teacher, he's able to do all these things. Back to you, Hina. Ma'am, you are mute, ma'am. Sorry, ma sorry, sorry, sorry. As Dr. Meena, thank you, sir, for that. And as Dr. Meena Chandra has written, other ways to address systemic challenges and garner support for psychiatry is to utilize all consultation layers or referrals to build bridges with juniors and senior colleagues in other specialities, which has helped us tremendously at our institute. Really, I think basically I, I, I would unabashedly say cell psychiatry. So every opportunity you have cell psychiatry, make it sound important, make it sound glamorous. I am actually saying sell it. And so I put it in my mind, I think about it that way because uh, the resistance is so high. So I um, thank you, Dr. Meena, for saying that. Dr. Raman is saying that training postgraduates from other specialities who are posted to psychiatry in a systematic manner or integrating it with other disciplines whenever and wherever possible. And that way, a CBME is really useful if we can use integration and bring it back to mainstream psychiatry to come with the rest of the mainstream subjects. Thank you, Dr. Raman, for that. Um, Dr. Kishore has said that in some universities like theirs, annual leadership program is held. It is fairly well organized. Selection is by CV and well written application. Excellent. And I think maybe other universities and other institutes also should do this. As Dr. Mohan Isaac said, these are niche programs like Nimhans, I know, take 16. So it's very small and we want every, every psychiatrist that trains to have that leadership qualities. So maybe we should think about how IPS can introduce some modules which can be, you know, have a cascading effect down and can be utilized everywhere. Um, so those are the other questions. I think that's end, but I will ask now Dr. Sri Lakshmi to give the final word as the moderator, please ma'am, if you would like to share. Yes. Uh, thank you. We were fortunate to have uh, Dr. Mohan Isaac in our group, so it made our job easier. And other doctors with vast experience. And uh, Dr. Ravi Teja has very nicely and succinctly summarized the whole thing. Uh, I will end with uh, the, just one sentence, is that uh, the system challenges are there uh, and we have to face them. Ask not what the system will do for you. Ask what you as an individual will do to change the system. Thank you. 
Thank you so very well put. And I think that brings us to the end of this very uh, fantastic jigsaw puzzle that has been organized by the Dr. Suhas and the team where each of us and you know, so as we do, this is content and process. So we have also learned another way of teaching learning, please at the background of that is also there that if you have large groups, how do you make them interactive, break them into small group, come back in the plenary exchange ideas. So content and process please to be noted. And I thank the organizers from Dr. Kishore and myself for allowing us to moderate this session. I think it has brought up many topics, many ideas, many solutions, and it has stimulated many minds. My only submission to the organizers is how to carry on the conversation beyond this one hour and whether we can have some modalities to do that is something which some of the organ, uh, some of the participants also inquired. So I leave it for the organizers and maybe even us as task force to think about what next. Thank you all the participants, moderators, presenters for a wonderful afternoon. And uh, I give it to Dr. Kishore for the last word. No, madam, you have uh, nicely summarized and uh, we can recirculate all the committee members, uh, the UG, PG and the task force. We have given our WhatsApp number and uh, uh, email ID so that anybody has any opinion, whether it's undergraduate, postgraduate, or the faculty, uh, they can please do mail us or send the WhatsApp. Um, I would request uh, Dr. Uh, Suhas, uh, organizing secretary, also to share the email IDs so that uh, we will engage them in the best possible way. But it is so easy in a small group, you can connect to us directly. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kishore and uh, Dr. Keenan. So, on, on that topic, we have actually prepared a Google feedback form because I knew that we couldn't put all of our thoughts into this and there are so many things we would want to take forward. And ideas generated have to be translated into at the ground level also. So there will be a Google feedback form that will be uh, shared at the end of this uh, conference. And once a vote of thanks is done, we will share it there. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Dr. Hemal and Dr. Kishore, uh, for uh, chairing this session and all the moderators for uh, making this and the participants for making this a smooth run. Uh, we are now, uh, I'd like all of you all to join in for the closing session uh, of the conference with the valedictory ceremony, uh, commending the various awardees and uh, followed by the voter stands. I follow, uh, and for the uh, uh, for presiding the validation ceremony, I call upon first uh, the president of the IPS Karnataka, Dr. Kiran Kumar PK. Yeah, good evening. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, it's a very very nice CME, National CME on Psychiatry, Education and Faculty Training. I first uh, congratulate team uh, St. Saint, Saint, Saint John's, HOD, Dr. Manohari, and the organizing secretary, Dr. Sohas, for the wonderful uh, uh, work and uh, the topics and uh, speakers, and the excellent uh, selection. And the, in one day, you have covered uh, so many topics. Uh, congratulations again. And uh, uh, now it's time for award ceremony. Okay, now first one is I top scholarship for teachers towards enrichment in psychiatry teaching skills steps. Award is 2020-21 on successful completion of scholarship. Dr. Dhirendra Kumar Mishra, Sham Shah Medical College, Reva, and Dr. Dr. Gopal Dhar, Basaveshwar Medical College, Chittadurga, Karnataka, and Dr. Subhangi S. Dere, MGM Medical College, Nabi Mumbai, Maharashtra. Next.
ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಕರ್ನಲ್ ರಾಜೀವ್ ರಾಜೀವ್ ಕುಮಾರ್ ಸೈನಿ ಕಮಾಂಡ್ ಹಾಸ್ಪಿಟ್ ಹಾಸ್ಪಿಟಲ್ ಕಲ್ಕತ್ತಾ ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಬೆಂಗಾಲ್ ಆನ್ ಗೈಡಿಂಗ್ ತೇಸಿಸ್ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಫಾರ್ ಪೋಸ್ಟ್ ಗ್ರಾಜ್ಯುಯೇಟ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅಪ್ರೋಚ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಕೆ ರಾಮನ್ ಸವಿತಾ ಮೆಡಿಕಲ್ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ಚೆನ್ನೈ ತಮಿಳ್ನಾಡು ಡೆವಲಪಿಂಗ್ ಪೆಡಗೋಗಿ ಟ್ರೈನಿಂಗ್ ಮಾಡ್ಯೂಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ಸೈಕ್ಯಾಟ್ರಿ ರೆಸಿಡೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಟೀಚರ್ಸ್ ಕಾಂಗ್ರಾಚುಲೇಷನ್ completion of dr johnson pradeep medical college bangalore karnataka for effective and innovative teaching method in psychiatry for medical teachers and students perspectives dr vasanta meghna s murthy krishna institute of medical science karat maharashtra for online modulator teaching to promote self directed learning among second year ug medical students congratulations dr suvarna jyoti k sri ramachandra institute of higher education and research tamil nadu for stimulation videos to improve teaching in psychiatry barriers facilitators and recommendations dr ರವಿ ತೇಜ ಇನ್ನಾಮುರಿ ಸಿ ಎಂ ಸಿ ವೆಲ್ಲೂರ್ ತಮಿಳ್ನಾಡು ವೈ ಪಿ ಜಿ ಡು ನಾಟ್ ಡು ಆರ್ ಡು ನಾಟ್ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಜಾಯಿನ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಟು ಮೆಡಿಕಲ್ ಕಾಲೇಜಸ್ ಕಂಗ್ರಾಚುಲೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸುಜಯ್ ಐ ಕ್ಯು ಸಿಟಿ ಮೆಡಿಕಲ್ ಕಾಲೇಜ್ ದುರ್ಗಾಪುರ್ ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಬೆಂಗಾಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ಕೋಡ್ಕಾಸ್ ಆಸ್ ಟೀಚಿಂಗ್ ಲರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಮೆಥಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ಗ್ರಾಜ್ಯುಯೇಟ್ಸ್ in psychiatry a before and after cross cross sectional study dr nimi chandran government medical college palakkad kerala for effect of online customized psychiatry teaching on perceptions about psychiatry among undergraduate medical students a rationalized control study congratulations the e poster winners national cme on psychiatry faculty training first place goes to dr smita ramdas government medical college thrissur for a dramatical way of teaching learning empathy for mbbs students congratulations second place goes to dr johnson pradeep ruben in johns medical college effective and innovative teaching methods in psychiatry and dr jagadish varna pramukh swami medical college development of web based learning resource for ug medical students congratulations thank you sir thank you sir for joining us uh i now uh, call upon uh, our uh, minds united trustee dr vinay to announce the rest of the award uh if the slides can be projected or i can be made co host so i'm going to just take you through the announcements of uh, uh, the initiative that uh, dr kiran kumar was mentioning so i top uh, steps so this is a combined initiative of uh, minds united trust and also indian uh, teachers of psychiatry forum and this is funded by uh, uh, infosys foundation so this is a so this particular award which is given annually so it carries a cash prize of uh, uh, 5000 and a certificate so the criteria here is any initiative of a research that has implication in undergraduate and postgraduate psychiatry training in india and it can be any individual or a, a group of psychiatry teachers or department associations so the proposal should be sent to the minds united trust before 30th of november every year and uh, this will be judged by a panel of uh, people experts 
to each from government and private uh, medical colleges who have a minimum of 10 years of experience in undergraduate and postgraduate psychiatry uh, respectively. So the decision of the panel will be uh, communicated uh, 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 at a suitable forum usually. So these are the uh, winners of uh, year 2021 and 22, Minds United Trust Indian Teachers of Psychiatry Award undergraduate section. It goes to the Department of Psychiatry, Savita Medical College, Chennai, uh, for their undergraduate psychiatry education programs, including research in initiatives. Congratulations to the Department of Psychiatry, Savita Medical College, Chennai. Thank you, sir. And uh, coming to the ITAP Award uh, uh, PG section, again, the same uh, uh, regulations apply here. The Award this year's 2021-22 goes to the Department of Psychiatry, St. John's Medical College, Bengaluru, for their consistent and innovative and comprehensive education programs for psychiatric postgraduates. Congratulations to the whole department and whole team. Hmm. Next is uh, yeah, yeah, it's a I top steps award. So steps, uh, it's a abbreviation for scholarship for teachers towards enrichment in psychiatry teaching skills. So uh, we've had a discussion in the morning uh, from the recipient of the first year's award. So this year's, uh, I'm going to announce soon. So the criteria to apply for this particular uh, uh, ITOP STEPS award is that uh, they should be currently working in any medical college or teaching institution offering courses like MBBS, DPM, MDDM, and postdoctoral fellowship, and should have at least one year of experience as a psychiatric teacher. And uh, the uh, designation can range from senior resident to a professor. So they should submit a write up on why or he wishes to apply for this enrichment scholarship in not more than 100, 800 words. And uh, there are no recommendation letters needed in this regard. And they should also submit a sample video recording of their teaching session on any topic. And it should be uh, not more than five minutes. So a selection committee, again, involving two government and two private institutions, psychiatric faculties will decide upon. And uh, uh, this uh, uh, particular uh, steps uh, will uh, have uh, 20 uh, hours of uh, online contact sessions spread across 20 weeks. And it includes both the uh, basic medical education technology principles like drawing SLOs, appropriate teaching learning methods and assessments, aligning them. And also four hours of customization. Uh, that is whatever the scholarship awardees uh, think that it's important and relevant to them. So out of 20 hours, four hours will be meant for customized uh, sessions. So this year, 2021 and 22, this particular right up step awards goes to four of them. Uh, Dr. Pooja Shatadal, Government Medical College, Gujarat. Dr. Snehil Gupta, All India Institute of Medical Sciences, Bhopal, Madhya Pradesh. Dr. Nitisha Verma from Hind Institute of Medical Sciences, Safedabad, Uttar Pradesh. And Dr. Rahul Mishra, Government Medical College, Shadol, MP. So they are ready to uh, complete this 20 hours in coming uh, uh, weeks. So anyway, congratulations to all four of them. So all the best for you. Going further, uh, there is uh, one more set of awards. Uh, ITOP's uh, must enrich research grant for psychiatric teachers, which is a one-time research grant given. Uh, it carries a cash prize, a cash amount of uh, 10,000 and a certificate. Uh, uh, this year, it goes to uh, the people. Uh, Dr. Suha Satish from Nimans, Bengaluru. Dr. Amit Singh from KGMU Lucknow, Dr. Meena Chandra from Atal Bihari uh, Vajpayee Institute of Medical Sciences, New Delhi, Dr. Guru Prasad from Bangalore Medical College and Research Institute, Bengaluru, and then Dr. Sharmista Deshpande from Srimati Kashibai Navale Medical College, Pune. So congratulations to all, of, all the five of you. So uh, these uh, five uh, people, so they're going to uh, conduct the uh, uh, educational research under guidance of uh, mentors and they're going to submit it. So only on the submission of the project that they'll get this enriched uh, research grant. So anyway, all the best for all the five of them. 
So there is one more award in this regard, in this initiative, that is Minds United Trust, Dr. C. Shamsundar Award. So this is given uh, in the name of Dr. C. Shamsundar, who was uh, uh, a legend uh, who uh, started a psychotherapy course for uh, uh, residents at Nimans. So, and he's also very keen on uh, uh, these aspects. His areas of interest include uh, ethics, humanities. So, uh, uh, this award is for any study whose conclusions is about relationship between human values and well being, either individual or collective effort it can be. But uh, uh, this particular award it should be from the state of Karnataka. That's the one uh, the thing. So, there must be always a message that is logically arrived at the base of data. And uh, it can be a narrative of personal experiences or qualitative studies, which can be included. And this particular award has a cash prize of 5,000 certificate and a memento. Again, uh, it will be judged uh, by the panel. So this year it goes to uh, Mrs. Alka Shaji, Mrs. Shrikari Somshekar Rao, and Mr. Sudeep from the Department of Clinical Psychology, JSS Medical College, Mysuru, for their work on relationship between human values and well-being among clinical psychiatric postgraduates. Congratulations for them. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So that's the end of uh, uh, the series of uh, announcements that was to be made. Uh, this, uh, uh, this initiative is particular reference to the improving psychiatric education uh, uh, by Minds United Trust and uh, other uh, 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 committees, subcommittees, and also Indian Teachers of Psychiatry Forum. Thank you for this opportunity to announce this. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Um, now, uh, this brings us to the last uh, part of the uh, uh, ceremony uh, event today. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, effort that has gone in to uh, make this uh, CME today. And I'd, to uh, thank them all, I'd uh, now like to invite Dr. Suhas, uh, the Secretary of the Organizing Committee, uh, handing it over to you, sir. Uh, we come to the uh, end of the program. I'd just like to end with the uh, vote of thanks. Thank you all uh, very much for joining us today for this uh, important CME. And uh, I would like to first of all thank uh, Director of St. John's, uh, Father Reverend Father Paul, and our Dean Dr. George Dukusa for their immense support to this program. I would also like to thank uh, Dr. George for uh, actually coming in today morning, giving his inaugural remarks, along with the head of our medical education unit, Dr. Uh, John Stephen. I would also like to thank our keynote speaker, especially Dr. Haligare Muthi, uh, for giving his opening uh, remarks initially and uh, the opening remarks by the IPSC, IPS faculty training uh, head, Dr. Kishore, Dr. Heenal, uh, the IPS delegates like Dr. Gautam Saha, Dr. Nand Raju, uh, Dr. TSS Rao, Dr. KK Mishra, uh, Dr. Om Prakash Singh, Dr. Pratima Muthi for releasing the Minds Newsletter website. Uh, Professor, Professor Mohan Isaac sir, for actually joining in and releasing the brief book by medical students. I would like to thank all the speakers for clearing our concepts and enhancing our understanding today uh, pertaining to psychiatry education and faculty training. Indeed, you have all put your best efforts to make this event very unforgettable. Uh, we are completely indebted to you and thank you once again. I would like to thank our respected chairpersons for accepting our invitation, uh, joining enthusiastically, without which we would not have accomplished this. A special note of thanks to the uh, moderators of the group discussions in the afternoon who are willing to uh, try a new format uh, with the breakout sessions and sort of facilitate the discussion with so many different uh, seniority of professionals and students. I express my humble thanks to Dr. Luke Salazar and Dr. Shankar for uh, doing the poster evaluations and being the judges for us. They had a very tough job. There were 24 poster submissions that we had. It was a three hour uh, marathon session that went on in Hall B. And it was an exemplary session that was made possible by different participants, professors, students, and interns from various parts of the country and even abroad. I would like to congratulate all the winners of the uh, awards from the Minds Trust as well as the poster competitions. And I would like to thank Dr. Manori, our HOD, and the entire Department of Psychiatry for their unwavering support in this program. Uh, last but not least, no event can actually take shape without a team, and it was the dedication and enthusiasm of our organizing committee, uh, Dr. Divya, Dr. Sachin, Dr. Miriam, Dr. Samrat, uh, Dr. Sean, Dr. Simsi, Dr. Avinash, who made this event a huge success. I want to extend my heartfelt gratitude to all of them. They have devoted uh, lots of time and energy for this program, and they've gone an extra mile to make this possible today. 
we have had more than 100 registrations and participants of nearly 70 attendees all the time in all a on an average and more than 50 uh, 50 attendees for the poster session in all b if i sincerely apologize if i've actually missed out in anybody there are a lot of people uh, to thank but thank you all once again for joining me so what uh, we have done is we have created a google uh, form that i can Muted yourself, you so muted. In the Google, uh, in the chat box, I put a Google feedback form. Now there will be a lot of thoughts raised from some of these discussions, which I would urge all of you to put it here, and we'll make all of this available both as a conference proceedings. What happened? We'll share the recordings as well. But some of the suggestions you put in here will make sure that all of the IPS uh, training task force heads receive them and can communicate to the IPS. Uh, executive committee and the general body as well yeah so we will also send you all the same forms by email as well along with the uh, participant certificate for all those who have attended today along with the speakers yeah so thank you all once again and we will close thank you all I'll end the session now. Unless there's any final remarks or any comments from anybody. You have to end it because we are not going to leave. <laughs> sure. Sure, because thank you. Plus you have to hold on because when people are filling up, if you end, they can't access the uh, feedback. Hold on for oh, a while. Okay, okay. I mean, it can be sent to the registered mail ID. Right. Yeah, yeah. It, it will be sent to your registered email ID. Right. Yeah. Already I've done a rehearsal of closing the session, so <laughs> <laughs> we're ready for it. <laughs> Hold on for a few minutes and close the thing. So. Sure, sure.